Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to Elk Mountain and our Elk Mountain mining series. We're back up here at the gravel mine. I'm just going to get the pickup loaded here on the back of the low loader. We're going to head down, pick up the other of the gravel crushers that we set up last time. Uh, but we also need to bring back a conveyor to go with, just to be able to set this all up how I want to. So we're, uh, we'll be able to use some auto drive and get the conveyor brought back up behind the pickup and uh, we'll be able to bring the other gravel crusher here on the back of the low loader. Now if there was a tow bar or something on the back of here we uh, could have possibly towed it back but uh, we won't push our limits too much. But I do have a plan on how we are going to set these up, get the other crusher set up as well and uh, have the options for both. Now about four hours after I recorded the last episode FS Miner released a new mod and I'm just going to show you that very very quickly because uh, that would have saved a lot of the hassle I'm about to go to but for the sake of what I've already done we're going to carry on and get it set up the way I had intended. So just looking here in the FS Miner creations category in the store this is the crusher we have see we own two of them have a look here this is a version 2 now it costs twice as much the reason it costs twice as much i'm not sure if we're going to be able to see it in here but it does actually have a second conveyor which i think is that little one down there and if you load your product into the end one conveyor will output the gravels so stones into gravels and the other conveyor will output the sand so you get two for one with this crusher uh, which would have been nice if we had have had that as an option before last episode was recorded. We would have gone with that. But uh, we're going to go with the uh, single option here and have a little bit of flexibility while also having a little bit of fun with some conveyors as well and uh, seeing how we can set this up in a little bit of a unique way. So we'll jump into the Phoenix. We will uh, head on down to the shop. We'll, uh, we'll head back around over the bridge. We'll go that way down and back around so we can stop into the shop in town on the way rather than bringing the... Crush it back up this way and uh, we'll go down and get things sorted. Alright, so we're here in the main dealer of Clearwater, the Cat and John Deere dealership. So like I said before, we are here to pick up a uh, a conveyor system. So we'll get the uh, pickup off this, we will get that purchased, get it all hooked up onto the back of the pickup and uh, then we'll use some auto drive to send them on their way back up to the farm. We'll just all back up to the gravel yard I should say. And uh, once we've done that, we will then be able to carry on and go and get the other crusher picked up from down at the train depot. Well, I should have remembered from FS19 that there was some compatibility issues with hooking up to this uh, this conveyor, but we aren't able to actually hook on to the back of the pickup, which is a bit of a shame. So we'll uh, we'll have to use a little bit of magic to get this back up to the gravel yard uh, we'll uh, use some store deliveries and get it reset up to there so that's a little bit of a shame but we won't, won't worry about that we'll go and uh, worry about getting the gravel crusher up there what well, we've learnt from our little accident last week with the train we've uh, left the truck on the other side and we're going to take the crusher over seemed to be a popular little accident though and a lot of people were interested what would have happened if we had got on top of the train and ended up going for a tour out of bounds whether uh, whether the truck would have been knocked off or what would have happened I don't know the answer to that because uh, we didn't get that far but it would have been interesting to find out we'll just get this put up on here now I didn't fold the wheels down on the back and I didn't widen the deck but I think we're okay on both fronts be able to stop right about there fitted last time without any of that so we'll just leave that there and then go and grab the truck and get it hooked back up all right and as the train heads on back past us once again we are on our way back up to the gravel mine so we will uh see you up there looking forward to getting this all set up and uh seeing how well we can get it all running to get some gravel and sand crushed and uh adding to our options of things to sell so we'll uh, see you back up at the gravel mine All right, we are back. So we're just gonna unload this here. Uh, that will be a little bit easier than doing it in the actual yard area. There's some more space to be able to get things all set up the way I have intended to. So we'll uh, go and get the gravel crusher off and moved over into position and get things set up. Now you see we've got the conveyor is sitting over there as well. So uh, we'll jump in here, get this unloaded and go and see how it's all gonna work. All right, so we've got our two crushers here, line of stern. Now what I'm planning on doing is trying to get this conveyor in between them and 
have it set so that the conveyor can dump out of one, or load from one and dump into the other and uh, see if we can get it to work that way. Now the reason I picked this conveyor, because it has dual purpose, so we get it in underneath, let's manoeuvre it a little bit to get it in about the right spot. Now the reason, if we go and unfold it, you can see the wheels turning there, anyone who didn't use this in FS19, you can then pivot on the spot. Now the idea with this is if we just want to keep the gravel we could create a gravel pile here and if we wanted to load a truck we could extend this right out it's got quite a long reach on the conveyor and reach over top of the pile we're creating and load into a truck. So that is what I'm planning on doing so we'll see if this is going to work or not. Uh, I have given it a little bit of a test and I'm confident it's going to but obviously plans and all of that in a farming simulator or mining simulator as we're playing at the moment don't always work so we'll le leave that there in fact I might just move it over a little bit and uh, we're in a pretty good spot for that other crusher I might just bring it back just a touch we'll get that set up and then we'll go and grab some stones and bring them over and see how it all goes all right there we go now the only other thing I could do extra would be to get a second conveyor so any of the sand that comes out this end moves away I don't know how big our pile we can generate before it starts to clash with the conveyor there uh, so that might be something we think about in the future or we just have to deal with one of the loaders and keep it clear now the other thing I'm assuming we're going to need to use one of the front loaders for this so we might have to take the Hitachi back over to the gravel use that to load the stones out of the uh, mine and bring the JCB loader over with the slightly smaller bucket and use that to keep the uh, keep the crushes here full and running so let's go and see how that's all going to work and uh, get it all going all right so we've got the JCB over at the crusher we've got the uh, half pipe trailer here with the vent we'll get some stones up into here only take a couple now one thing I've also done is I changed the paint layer it applies when we terraform so it is now showing gravel so previously it was dirt but there you go you can see areas we're affecting end up with a gravel finish on it which is uh, a little bit more authentic uh, you wouldn't be really be leaving dirt behind when you're scraping a whole lot of gravel out so we'll uh, just get this dumped in here we'll only take one more bucket load now I'm trying to think of ways I could set up an auto drive course to run the trailer um, because if we could do that we could actually conceivably set up a conveyor with a pickup on the other side and dump in front of that but for auto drive to dump it requires a uh, trigger to dump now course play doesn't um, but I'm not quite sure with the course play at least course play in farming simulator 19 did not require a trigger uh, might be different so far in 22 we'll see uh, might be something we explore a little bit more but let's just see if we can get this set up and uh, we'll take baby steps towards getting things maybe a little bit more automated in the future we'll just dump this out here going pretty much where we want it to that should be good Try forward a little bit just to make sure we can get it all out of the trailer there we go and for now we're just going to park this up here and we'll jump into the JCB and see what happens when we get some uh, stones up into here you probably need some hearing protection on around these things they are pretty noisy there we go we've got some stones here we'll dump this into the first one start to see them going up the conveyor up the hopper and they're heading up the other conveyor and they're dropping into the last one well that's perfect that is working exactly how I wanted it to that's awesome so we're going straight from stones to gravel to sand without having to do anything else which is uh, exactly what I was hoping now we'll just keep an eye on that pile down the end with the sand see how far we can go with that before it uh, gets too big oh to be a little bit careful with this as well it's quite heavy surprised actually I thought this JCB would be okay with uh, 4,000 litres of stones in the front no sudden movements probably the best bet all right there we are we've got 19,000 of litres of stones have gone in there and uh, we've got a pretty decent pile of sand appearing down the other end here interesting a little bit of clipping there going on but uh, all in all that's working pretty darn well now what I was going to say we jump into here we'll let this last little bit run out there we go now what I want to do for the next load is just make a pile of 
gravel here rather than going all the way through to the sand. So we'll leave that there and uh, we'll go and get another load and dump that in as well, see what ends up happening with that. Another 19,000 litres of stones here. Now what I might just test, I'm not sure if there is a tip trigger, I know it won't be very uh, authentic or realistic, but I'm just going to move the JCB here out of the way, see if there's a tip trigger in front or whether the uh, product does actually have to go in, up into the hopper. I expect it will have to go into the hopper, but uh, let's find out. we just backed up there, it does not appear to be any tip trigger of any sort. Uh, I will just see if we dump a little bit to ground, what happens. No, it starts to pile up there, we don't want that, we'll have to get in and clean that up. Alright, well, we'll just dump another pile here next to it now. Like I said, we could use the conveyor with a pickup and that might be something we do in the future. Uh, but we'll figure that out a little bit later, but for now, we'll just get this dumped out here and uh, carry on using the JCB. Alright, so we'll just watch the stones run up here. Now, what I expect is we're going to have to get up in to the conveyor and tell it to tip to ground because it won't be comfortable doing that without having anything to tip into. So there we go. We'll keep that going there. Now we'll probably also find that uh, it will stop once we uh, run out of stones in there. So we're going to try and either keep on top of it, which we weren't able to just before, or uh, let it stockpile a little bit more in both the conveyor and the uh, crusher before we try and tell it to tip to ground. See there, we've already run out we can get this next lot up in there. It may still detect that we told it to tip to ground. Oh. Careful of that collision there. A bit rough here with this crusher. Oh no, it's still going. Okay, here we go. It's good. Alright, let's get this all put up in here and uh, then we'll take a look. Uh, my next plan after this is to start getting some of the lime sold. So we'll, uh, we'll heave these We'll get these finished, doing what we're doing with them at the moment, and uh, then we'll go and get some lime underway and down to the train silo. Alright, it's about the last dumped in there, we've got a little bit underneath the front of the hopper which tipped over the side, we can uh, try and pick up. Get that bit there, we can, we might have to come in from the side to get the other piece, I did try a moment ago, so we'll uh, see if we can get it from this angle. That's, uh, that's all run pretty well, exactly how we wanted it to. There we go, perfect. Alright, let's get this last little piece put in here, and uh, then we'll get things shut off here, and go and take a look at the lime production, see how much lime we've got in there, and uh, get the truck set up to run down to the silo, using some auto drive, uh, which actually means we'll be able to carry on doing other things while it gets underway there. But uh, that's very nice, nice pile of gravel, we did look at the textures last time, and a rather sizable pile of sand, so that was where I was saying we're probably better off having a conveyor coming out and offset to make a pile like that as well. And you can see we've still got some space through here to run a truck if we wanted to load direct into that, which we might do in the future. If we do, we'll look at putting a crossing out this end because then we can set up an auto drive to come in at one end and out at the other. So just taking a look here at the lime production. Now I thought uh, I thought we'd produced all the lime we could, but we're actually capped out on storage. So we can only store 100,000 litres of lime. We've still got 133,000 litres of stones in there, so that's actually our next bottleneck in the lime production, is the storage. Obviously our first bottleneck was how quickly we could get it filled, uh, but our second one is here. So let's jump into the Phoenix and take a look at the auto drive course. Now I have already set this up, uh, it was a bit laborious to try and do it all in a video, but we'll show you how it works and uh, we'll do a time lapse as we run down to the silo and uh, follow it all the way down. If we just bring up the auto drive menu there on the right, you'll see we've got lime crusher truck load, which is our loading point, down to the train silo dump, and we're taking lime. Now we'll just turn on the course there so you can see it. Uh, now it is this one that follows around on this side here. When I first created it, I just did a sim simple loop in there before I going on the way back. So that is the one we're wanting. I'll probably get through and delete some of those points at some time. But we'll turn that back off. Uh, we'll press go on this. It should pick it up straight away. And you can see, there we go, cover's already opening. Let's get zoomed in there. Now the trigger on the lime fill is not the nicest. In the sense it is not very realistic in how it fills. And we've had this a number of times before on other mods, other silos and things like that. Uh, it's nice that it's got a big white trigger is all I can say. You're not fumbling around trying to find where it is. But if you're going for authenticity, it will work directly underneath it. But it's just the way auto drive picks up the trigger and gets into it to get filled up so 
we'll get all the lime in here now I have run a test of this to make sure it all works so I'm confident we're going to get there uh, one thing you might notice as we ride along on the auto drive and on time lapse is uh, how it struggles with the weight up some of the hills so I do wonder if I'd turned a realistic weight on whether we wouldn't have put quite so much lime in there because of the mass of it and uh, kept it a little bit lighter for the truck to handle it but here we are it should hang off to the right here and start making our way back down to the train silo so uh, we'll follow along here like I said and we'll see when we get down there Alright, well we've made it down here to the silo and uh, you can see we're getting things tipped out which is perfect now I think I haven't changed it, it's tipping it out through the grain door so it's going to take us a little bit of time uh, but we'll just let that run for a little bit now I'll show you the path anyone who's interested in the auto drive configuration here just bring that up and turn it on so you can see the path just goes through and we've got our trigger point here out the front train silo dump so it's detected the trigger there at the silos and that will just carry on going. Now obviously when we want to we can summons the train, bring it in here and uh, load it on the auger on the other side. So uh, with that we can then send it off to be sold elsewhere. So what I might do, we'll leave the truck here running on a couple of laps of lime. We'll get back up to the mine and we will uh, probably, what I'm thinking is get a second conveyor dis dis uh, delivered so we can get some sand and gravel made and uh, we might get another truck we've got another phoenix sitting up at the mine we might bring that down and use that to run some laps with some sand and some gravel and bring that down here as well and once we've got enough for a load in the train we'll come over and get the train loaded up and send it off to sell all right so we've made a couple more acquisitions we've got two more conveyors there and we've also got one of the uh, loading conveyors so we're just going to get all this sand moved out from under this end and into a pile. I'm just going to get this other entrance opened up down this end. We'll try to get that sorted out. Uh, and we've also got a third conveyor to try and load it down on the other end. So I figured we might as well go the whole hog. We'll take the little loading conveyor down to the other end. And we'll see about trying to get that all set up with being able to dump the stones out of the tractor and trailer right on top of that. And get it all running a little bit more automatically than having to use the JCB and then once we've uh, before before we've got that up and running we're going to actually extend both of these conveyors and we'll have a truck here soon it's on its way down from the gold mine and we'll get that hooked up and hopefully we'll be able to unload directly into that to run it down to the train uh, train silo so I'm just going to head over here we'll get our terra farm up and running properly we're not quite on the right setting right at this very second uh, we do need to change that to flatten and discharge material is correct so we probably turn that on and uh, make a start on leveling this out a little bit oh here comes the uh, the other truck the nice gold phoenix that's come down from the gold mine we had color coded them and uh, that will get back up there at some stage but for now we'll make use of it down here with uh, loading some of this material out so I'm just going to carry on working here just about got it sorted we'll bring the JCB over and use the uh, fill here to flatten this off between the road there's a little bit of leveling we need to do there but generally this is all looking pretty good just trying to move some of these stones there we go let's uh see how much more we need to do we do need to raise it up actually just a little bit here so we'll uh we'll go and grab the jcb bucket and use that i think we have a better luck there we go that's looking nice and smooth there now so uh good timing because it looks like we've just about picked up all of the sand as well just a last little piece there it's a quite a big pile so we're gonna have to uh have to be creative when it comes time to loading that probably having to do the same thing interesting though i'm sure we've run the same amount of sand through as we did gravel it was a trailer load so 
looks like the sand has a uh, much lower density so therefore ends up with more product which is uh, I suppose probably quite realistic to how sand is. So uh, with that other truck down here now we'll uh, go and get that all set up over here and uh, then we can try and start to get some uh, more stones running through the uh, crushes. Alright the other phoenix is back that's its uh, third load is filling up for now so that is all working very well so we're just going to come in here now for some reason I was thinking we could do both of them at once but we can't actually because we need to go from the gravel crusher here at the front to the gravel crusher at the back so we can only do one or the other which is good actually because it means we can get a truckload of each in there so we'll put that there that should be all ready to fill into we'll now go and grab a load of stones in the trailer and then we've got the conveyor there all set up so we should be able to just dump in front of it and get that going into the crusher so we'll go and see how things work wait for the phoenix here to rush past with the next load of lime put that down to the silos now i don't know what capacity we have down at the silos at the train station either we uh, might find we fill those up with lime before too much time goes by all right so we're in the hitachi we've got terra farm turned on we will get a couple of buckets full of stones into it there we go see it leveling there getting it filled up 10,000 litres just about there we go get this dumped into the trailer get one more bucket load it'll be full and then we'll be taking it over to the crushers all right and there we go trailer's full so phase one done so go and get this over and dumped and hopefully load it into the crusher so this is uh I guess this is the new part what we haven't tested out yet we're back up in here I'm not sure if we've got that little uh, little conveyor turned on but we'll start tipping and I'll just jump into it and make sure it is running there we go it wasn't so it should be now why are we not picking that up there we go it is picking things up there perfectly and that'll keep tipping that's going up there that is going all the way up into the crusher now if we come down here Give it a second, we'll start to get some crushed stone coming out of there. There we go, it is going up. And we're going to plan, we'll start falling into the back of the truck soon. And there we go, we had to uh, tell it to unload. I was worried that perhaps the fill type wasn't going to work in the truck. If we just hop up in here, we're getting it in. So it is set to bulk, which is good. So we'll be able to re record an auto drive course be able to get this truck to go from this point out the other point and uh, head along and we can set up a fill point for each of these so one for gravel and one for the sand of course to make sand we just need to be tipping around to the other side so we'll uh, leave that going there we'll go and grab a few more loads in the trailer and bring those over and keep things moving for a little bit there we are we have a full truckload of gravel so we'll just get over here I'm not going to run this all the way down myself we are going to use auto drive I do need to set up a course that runs through here uh, but for now make sure that the lime truck isn't coming roaring down the hill because they come pretty fast over that little crest there but I think we should be able to stop about there if we just bring up the auto drive we should be able to go and pick our deliver option we're just going to leave it here lime crusher and we're going to deliver this to the train silo let's see 
that will work. Now that should work, it thinks it's an unloaded combine because it has got a fill point or a weight point to fill at, uh, but this will work to get down there and it should hopefully come back to the crusher. So we'll let this truck run off and uh, do its thing and we might actually intercept the lime truck when it comes back and set that up on a similar sort of loop. Uh, and while we're also waiting for that we will set up the auto drive course for it. So we are back here with the lime truck, I've set up an auto drive course to get round to the gravel uh, and you'll see we've actually got 64 litres in because I tested it but here we are at crusher, crusher, gravel load, taking it down to the train silo and gravel. So we'll just turn this on and follow along with the course. It uh, will hang a right and go and park it underneath that conveyor which is uh, all very good. Everything should work how it was before so this is, uh, this is quite cool. In fact what we might do we might even look at changing over once this one's gone and changing over and getting some sand done and into the other truck to run to sand but there we go it's detected the trigger from the conveyor which is perfect and it's starting to get some gravel in there so we just need to make sure it doesn't drive on when it is empty I'll be intrigued to see what happens when uh, when it runs out of gravel so we better make, actually make sure we go and keep it full I know there is a setting in fact let's just take a quick look so I believe it's this setting here under the main settings if silos empty wait uh, but we'll just have to wait and see what other options do we have drive on wait so I think we'll just leave it at wait I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right one or not someone will correct me if I'm wrong but we'll just leave that there for now we'll go and grab some more gravel and or more stone sorry and keep this uh, gravel crusher going and the truck did what I suspected it might do which was drive on even though it isn't full Anyhow, we can go and fix that, get it backed up and back in under the trigger and keep it going. Well things are going pretty smoothly now, we've got all this set up, it's very close to being properly automated. Uh, we did have the issue of course with the truck driving off when it uh, didn't have any fill going into it, so I have let us get a little bit of a pile of stones here, uh, which will help it stay in the right spot and keep on filling up but what we're going to do when that truck that is there is full and heading off we're going to uh, change over to the uh, sand and start getting some of that made so then we can get a couple of truckloads down to the train silo and then send the train off to go and sell them see how much money we can make and there we go truck is just on its way up the hill so that is good timing we'll get over here and get ready to start dumping now good or bad we can actually block the next truck coming in with the trailer here so uh, that helps a little bit to make sure that it isn't going to go in and start loading in the wrong spot if we don't want it to uh, I do have to be a bit mindful of where we're dumping those stones as well just to make sure they're not going to be too far in the way but there we go we'll leave that there we'll go and jump here and spin this over all right there we are we're getting some gravel here into the second crusher get some sand made and hopefully that's going to go up and not start dumping it has Oops, better stop that. We don't want it to start dumping yet. There we go. We'll stop that. We'll uh, get the loader and pick up that little bit. Get it out of the way. Now uh, that was because we had it to unload before when we were dumping it onto the ground, or it may have detected there's some on the ground close by. So we'll use the loader here and get that tidied up and out of the way. That's only been pretty good timing actually. There's the first truck back in as well. So they did. Looking at their tire tracks, they did clip the pile of stones there just a little bit. Not too badly though. Uh, but we can adjust that, we can make this platform just a little bit bigger. When I started making it the other day, or last episode, I really had no idea how we were going to use it. Uh, in fact, we don't need to keep the low loader parked there either. I would, didn't really have a vision for how it was going to be set up, so it's been a little bit of trial and error. But we just need to change this here to sand load, and send them off to that point. And hopefully, they will fill up as they get in under here. Seeing them slow down, and there we go. So we're getting some sand pit. In there now too so what I'm actually going to do is while we've got a big pile of sand here I'm actually going to use the loader and load up the pup trailer just to get this going a little bit faster and uh, just keep things moving because we do want to get down to the train and get some sold before the end of the episode here we are we'll get that tipped in there lots of weight coming off also be nice to tidy up this pile because uh, it is rather large and quite a bit of a mess there we go, we've got that filled very fast actually by using the loader as well as the uh, conveyor. Got a good chunk of that pile out of the way. They are going to get to the point they are putting the covers on and heading off. So now we just have to wait for the other one to make its way back. 
I should have really changed the uh, tip on the trailers though, so it wasn't tipping through the grain door. That would be a whole lot faster. But uh, there they go, they're chugging their way up the hill. I don't know if it'll be quicker with sand, I'm not quite sure. Anyhow, let's go and carry on getting some more gravel here. Keep things uh, rolling. Well, we've made a decent dent in the face of this gravel here. We're uh, quite a way back from where we started off. It's uh, working out pretty well. Now, just while we're waiting for the last truck, we've sent two loads of sand down. We're just going to wait for the last one to come back here. Once it is here, we will uh, get it filled up and ride down with it back down to the train depot. And we'll uh, make arrangements with the rail company down there, we'll get the train to the silos, we'll get it loaded up and send it off to sell. So we'll uh, looking forward to seeing what we can make off this. Be our first uh, first profit we have off all this equipment and uh, I, think, I think we're going to be quietly surprised at how much money we make in a very short period of time. Remember I've only been on here for, uh, well this is our second episode, about four hours of actual work time so uh, <laughs> it will show you, I hope, the potential of uh, mining here. But we're just going to carry on. I'm just putting a bit more stones into the uh, lime crusher here while we're waiting. We've got enough over the road, so uh, we'll just carry on. Now, I guess we could have actually had more trucks here if we wanted to. Uh, we're certainly keeping them running at a decent clip. So we'll uh, just carry on here. Actually, it's not tipping into where it should do. Well, that is. Here we go. So we'll uh, we'll see you when we've got that truck ready to go. All right, here comes the truck, so uh, we'll leave this running here for now, get it tipped out, we'll empty the stones out, and uh, we'll go over and get that truck loaded up and down to the train yard. All right, we've got the trailer full, and there is the truck full. So, once again, it's right along here on our way down to the train yard. We'll time-lapse this again. Keep an eye out for the other truck coming back the other way, and uh, we'll see you down at the train yard, where we'll manage to get this product loaded up and off to the sell points. And it looks like our auto drive course is just a little bit tight at this point uh, and the two trucks have decided they don't want to go past each other so we'll just uh, we'll just drag some of these across not sure if that'll be enough to get it started again we'll probably have to do that manually but just so that we know in the future we're not going to run into any ongoing issues let's see if that will fix it if we uh, just drive forward if that'll be enough for the other one to start driving again no, let's carry on. Here we go, we're past, that'll send them going again. So we'll carry on down to the silo and uh, get it unloaded. We are just pulling in here down at the silo, so we'll leave the truck here to unload because, as I said, it's going to take a wee while with those small grain doors. We'll make sure we fix that for future. Uh, let's go and find the little shack out the back here where we can hire the train from. So here is our shack for the train, I think. Button here somewhere. Bring up the F1 menu. We get to the right spot to find. There we go. I oh, return rented train, so I had already requested it. In fact, train arrives soon. It is 978, 900 meters or so away. So we'll go down here and keep an eye out for it. Make sure there's no low loaders crossing the track, and then we'll be able to get it all loaded up. Well, I must say, I wasn't expecting it to come in reverse, but here it is. So let's go and hop in and uh, we'll take a look at what we can put in. So we've got the three front cars which can all take bulk fill. So if we just reverse up to there, stop. Now I think we need to open the top and press fill and we'll just scroll through our fill types until we can find the first of the ones we've put in. Probably be lime I expect. There it is. So 130,000 litres of lime. Let's see how much of that we can get into the cart here. There we go. 90,000 litre capacity. So, move on to the next one. We'll put some uh, gravel, I think, in this one. Actually, we need to stop or we're going to get into trouble. Okay. 
behind the gravel. Here we go, 130,000 litres of gravel. So it's just over two truckloads, 42,000 or so litres per truck. So uh, every two truckloads, we pretty much fill the train. Uh, interestingly enough, that cart can take 120,000 litres. So let's find out what the third one here can do. I know we need to open the lid on this as well. There it is opening. And we're going to put the sand in this one, so let's wait and see. There goes our truck in the background too, heading back up to the mine. There we go, 90,000 litres there. So we have an overall capacity of 300,000 litres across the train. So close that door down. Now all we need to do, for anyone who hasn't used the train before, is head on off. It will take us to the edge of the map, which is not very far away. Nice little crossing here, and uh, how good is this? How good is this scenery when you're uh, driving along? But we won't get too much further along here. It'll ask if we want to carry on the train. There we go. To Cheyenne, and want to sell everything. We'll hit a yes. $182,000. So it doesn't break it down by the three different product types, but uh, that is a very, very healthy profit for us. So uh, let's... Uh, sneak back across the train tracks here and we'll head back up to the mine all right well we're back up here we've obviously run out of stone in the crushes and uh, the truck there's got as full as it can and it moved forward but that's fine we will sort that out next time but that has been a lot of fun i've really enjoyed getting these set up and uh, making use of them and as you can see 182 thousand dollars for uh four hours work probably obviously there's a lot of investment here in equipment but it has not taken us too long be able to make that money it's a nice way to really get into earning some good coin and helping to set up your uh set up your business or whatever it is so next time i think the plan is to spend some time up in the gold mine and get that up and running so that is going to take a little bit longer probably to get things working because there is more moving parts to the mine in terms of getting from dirt to gold so uh we'll go and spend some time up there and uh Look forward to bringing that to you very soon. But for this episode, I hope you have all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.